Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Michael Terman and this week we are going to be taking a look at this ruins scene that I made here in Blender and kind of breaking it down and helping you guys figure out how exactly you're going to make a similar scene back at home. So last two weeks, two weeks ago, you guys really blew up my dark hallway video and I thought that it'd be best for us to do a, something similar this week so to give you guys really what you want. So let's get straight into it. So just to start, let's kind of take a look at the scene as a whole. So let's get out of rendered view here back into solid view. And as you can see, for the scene itself is super, super simple. You just have these pillars, um, which I've custom modeled myself and kind of added them to my asset library so I could just import them in. Uh, then you got this, uh, this kind of back wall with the three supporting pillars here. And of course you have the scene itself. So as you can see, the main focal object that we have this time around is not really a light. Well, there is some light, but it's kind of this, uh, this statue that I bashed in from Blender Kit. So if you guys would like to download Blender Kit, I have a link to that in the description below. Just click it and you'll be able to import models into Blender seamlessly. So um, then you can kind of see like you have these steps, the water texture and you can kind of see like the plants going around, kind of suggesting that the ruins itself is somewhat abandoned. Uh, then you have this light source in the back, which I'll call the thing. So if we just isolate it here, so this is what it looks like without the statue in the way. It, it's really just a random series of circles that I kind of extruded and packed together into a vertical line. Anyway, this isn't really the focal point of the image, so that's all right. It just serves as like a supporting light in the background. So yeah, so that's the scene as a whole. One thing that I do have to work on the scene before I can safely say that it's a completed piece of 100% is to add some kind of destruction or some kind of wear and tear to the stairs, to the pillars and to the statue to make it kind of seem much older. But I'm quite happy with what the scene looks like now. So we're going to be sticking to this and I'm going to be telling you guys how to make it. So something that's done a little differently in this scene than I did in the previous one was that I actually didn't decide the focal object at first. So I was actually more uh, deciding on how the scene should look like uh, instead of what the object should be. So let's kind of just take everything away here and let's just take a look at the structure uh, and we'll take away the fog as well. So as you can see in the structure here, like it's fairly simple. Like I said, these are pillars that I've modeled earlier uh, and I just imported them. So if we open the structure here and let's just take everything away, uh, but the stairs. So I kind of started with this. I knew that I wanted a, some sort of middle pattern here, um, where there was something here and then stairs going up to the side. And then from there, I added in the stone pillars and it's, it's pretty simple. It's just this with an array modifier, as you can see. And then from there, I realized we needed something for the floor. So I added that with a, uh, you know, I added it with a water texture that I had previously and oh, forgot to turn on screencast keys. Uh, and then from there, I decided that we should have a back wall. And as you can see, the back wall is super simple. It's just a cube that's um, scaled up with no modifiers or anything. And then we added some supports to the wall later on to make the thing look the the scene look a little bit more vibrant and then from here we kind of have an idea of what the scene's going to look like and then we can start deciding on whether we want a statue some kind of light fixture or we want a person uh, in the middle of the scene so from here uh from the structure i started working on the thing in the middle here so i'm going to select these objects and i'm going to isolate them by pressing slash so as you can see here, this is also really, really simple. I, all I did was shift A and add in a circle, rotated it 90 degrees on the X axis. You can see here, scaled it up. Uh, and in edit mode, we extruded uh, and scaled in and then selected everything and extruded on the Y axis to get you this kind of ring shape. I chose not to use a torus for this because I wanted a shape that's a little bit more rigid. As you can see, you can see some flat edges here. And then from there, I just kind of got creative with how I placed the other circles. I wanted to kind of get this effect where they were all touching the edges of one another. And yeah, I, I think it, uh, it made for a really good thing to put in the middle of the scene. Uh, like that, but then obviously later down the road, I kind of decided that just the one thing wasn't enough uh, And I wanted to add a something else. So I kit bashed this uh, Statue 
which is a statue that I got from Blender Kit. Again, I'll put the link in the description if you want to look it up. So all I did was look up statue. And see, there are so many here that you can pick, but I picked this one called Young Girl Statue. And then you just drag and drop. And then you can scale it up, scale it down, whatever. So that's how I got this statue in the middle. And at this point, you know, the scene was looking pretty good. But um, the problem was that I had deleted the world settings when it comes to the lighting. So the, you know, the image was completely dark and I didn't really want that. As you can see here, I textured the light fixture uh, in the back a little later, but we'll get into that after. So, yeah. So from here, uh, let's just get rid of the thing here in the middle. So it's the scene is completely dark. Uh, and as you can see, like I deleted the background in the world, so it is completely pitch black. And that's when I started doing the lighting. So as you can see here, the lighting setup is pretty simple. It's two spotlights shining into the room. So this is a technique that I got from Max Hay. So you can check out his channel. I'll link it somewhere. Uh, and it's basically a spotlight that has a really low radius. A really low spot size to kind of concentrate the light in one area and then increasing the power to something really really high like one megawatts uh so you can see that effect here like this and it kind of gives that like it gives the illusion of sunlight but uh and again uh this scene still feels a little bit blank so i decided to add in fog to kind of show in the light rays uh, if you want to know the settings from my fog, they're really, really simple. Uh, it's just a volume scatter node uh, with the density really, really low at 0.005 and the anisotropy kind of turned up. And then, of course, combined with the light in the middle, you get this scene where the scene is adequately lit. There's sun coming in from natural sources. Uh, there's light coming in from natural sources and there's also light coming in from artificial sources. So this is kind of like the base scene and it's pretty much done, but I feel like it's still missing some immersion. Uh, the scene itself looks good. The composition is good. The lighting is good. The volumetrics are good. But one thing that I was missing was some kind of wildlife because uh, in a ruin like this or in a, in, a, in a scene like this, you would kind of think that it's been around for a long time. You know, it must have had like plants must have had time to grow and take over the area a little bit. So I use an add-on called Botanic, which is the industry standard when it comes to scattering um, realistic plants and other objects, as you will see later. I, I use the free version of Botanic, which gives you access to around 4% uh, of their total assets, but you can pay all the way up to $300, if I'm not mistaken, to get 100% of all their assets. Um, and yeah, so as you can see here, if I uh, like unhide these, so there was a few things that I was thinking about when I use the botanic assets. The first one is kind of like this giant ivy in the back wall. Um, the wall was feeling a little bit blank without it, and I felt like it was too flat, even with the statue and the lights there. So I, I wanted to add it something to it, and I kind of wanted to have ivy grow out of the water behind the statue and sort of creep up on the walls. So if you see some of the comments in my previous video, uh, they were saying how ivy creeps up the walls, and I absolutely agree. That's exactly what ivy does. So as you can see, we have some of that here in the back wall. Then you can also see that there's some pots here, which is also from Botanic, which is pretty nice that they have non-plant assets. Uh, and then we have some kind of like water reeds, which kind of grow out of the water from the soil and kind of peek out of the water. Finally, we have these ferns that are kind of lodged into the side uh, of the pillars, kind of like growing out of the cracks in the pillars. As you can see with the roughness here, it looks like the pillars are quite old and would give way to some sort of growth. So I, as you can see here, there's a little bit of a mistake there, but that's okay. It's barely noticeable and we can move it around in the future if we need to. So the way you use Botanic is by pressing N to open up your side panel after you have it installed. And it's called here, Polygonic. And you can just click spawn asset and you have all these different options that you could spawn in in order to make your scene more realistic. Obviously, since I have the free version, a lot of these um, you know, plants are locked behind a paywall, but that's okay because I think the free version is enough if you're try, you know, testing things out, trying things out, and you're still able to make the scene look just as good as mine. 
uh, shrubs and like I said here you have a bunch of different planting pots that you can kind of use to show that uh, there used to be plants but they're no longer so yeah and then after you just click OK and then it'll spawn in the asset into the scene wherever the 3d cursor is so just like that you can turn a scene a little bit more vibrant with some more greenery and plant life in the area and depending on what kind of greenery you use you can also use it to show the age and the decay uh, of the ruin or the statue or whatever it is you want. So that was most of the modeling, or all, all of the modeling, like pretty much done. So uh, yeah, so it's pretty simple to model a scene like this. Uh, it's really not that difficult. You just have to find a good balance uh, and a good composition to go with. Uh, you can always take examples from other people. Obviously, don't copy their work, but you can kind of see what works for them, see what doesn't work for them, and kind of emulate that in your own files. Uh, the next thing that we moved on to was texturing. So if again we go into rendered view here, it's a little bit of a heavy scene, so it's going to look a little ugly and blurry, but that's okay. So I knew from the beginning that I wanted the scene to be some sort of stone, uh, stone, a lot of stone textures. So as you can see, the back wall is just large limestone bricks that are kind of stacked on top of each other. Again, maybe not the most realistic looking. Uh, textures or something that doesn't really appear in real life but I really like the way it looks and I really like the way the yellow light bounces off the white limestone uh, so I, I, I you know I kept I kept with it uh, the stairs are stone the pillars are stone they're all just different versions of stone uh, just to make the scene look a little bit more dynamic again all of these different textures I got straight from blender kit so again I'm gonna show you here I'll just look up stone and there's so many different kinds of stone that you could use. Here you have the paving stones that I use. You even have these ones that have moss on them. Or these ones that look like they come out of a volcano, etc, etc, etc. You can see this is the one I use for the back wall that looks a little bit like limestone. So you have unlimited textures that you can just take and put into your scene. And they're completely free for you to use in both your personal and commercial projects. So there's that. So yeah, and I feel like the textures really complement the look of the scene you know it's kind of an old abandoned area there's a creepy statue in the middle and it's all made out of some kind of masonry that's been left untouched so yeah that's really simple to texture or the water texture this is a little bit more complicated uh it wasn't taken directly from uh blender kit so we kind of have to make it on our own uh as you can see the shader here as you can see the shader here it's uh not that difficult so it's just a musgrave texture, which is what most people use when they're texturing water. You run it into your bump and your normal. So all of you know how to do this already at this stage. It's just uh, up the scale. But we want to put the principal BSDF into a mix shader and uh, get a transparent BSDF so you can kind of see through the water. And then for the volume, this is completely optional, but you can make it look a little bit more murky by adding a little bit of density to it and changing the color to some kind of deep water color. And then finally, you can have a light path node and is camera ray put into the mix shader factor. And this will achieve the most realistic results for water, or at least the most realistic results that I've seen uh, to this point in my Blender career. Uh, again, this is I'm not going to claim ownership of these this note system. This is another note system that's done by Max Hay. Uh, he has a great video on how to make water textures, so you should definitely check it out. But I think uh, that this kind of note setup works for me, so this is what I decided to go with. So from then on, uh, we've basically textured everything in the scene. Botanic comes with texture so you don't have to texture those leaves yourselves or your rocks or your pots or anything like that so the scene is pretty much done and we can move on to compositing uh not to compositing sorry but to setting up the camera and kind of getting uh the best angle for your shot okay so from here on out we can start playing around with the camera settings in order to achieve uh, a similar look that i have here so if we click the camera you can see that i'm not using the regular perspective camera that we you know usually love and know because as you can see here, the perspective camera is a bit flat, so I kind of wanted a little bit of distortion around the edges just to kind of get this illusion that the room is really bigger than it is. So if we go to the type perspective here, we can change it to uh, panoramic or orthographic. And if you don't know how to do this yet, you can check out my video that I'm going to link at the top right about how to render your scenes. So we're going to use our fish eye lens polynomial. So with the fish eye lens polynomial, just like last time, there are two settings that you really need to know. So the first one is the K1, 
And this is basically your focal length. That's how much your camera zooms in, how much your camera zooms out when it comes to your scene. So I'm going to reset that there. Uh, and then K2 is the other one that you need to know. So I'm going to set K2 to zero first. And this looks just like a perspective camera. And there's it's flat. There's nothing polynomial or fisheye about it. But if we start to decrease our K2 value a little bit more, you can see something interesting that's happening. The whole scene is kind of curving like it's in a glass sphere or something like that. So obviously you don't want to go too much with this or else your scene will look really weird, but it's a perfect, it's perfect to create some sort of distortion around the edges and make the room seem, you know, bigger than it actually is. So let's set it to something like that. So as you can see here, there's a little bit of curving around the edges. The pillars are not completely straight. Uh, and you can see here on the left as well. It's really obvious when you look for it, but if you're not really looking for the fact that it's a fisheye lens, you really won't see it. And it adds to the mysticalness or the mystic or the uh, kind of like the illusion that the room is bigger than it is. So just like that, our camera is pretty much done. I don't have any depth of field because it's a close shot scene. Uh, and, you know, at this point, our image is pretty much ready to go, ready to be rendered. So we've pressed our F12 key and the scene has rendered itself out. If you would like to know what settings I'm using here, you can see on the right that our render samples are at 256. This is a lot lower than the 1024 that I usually use because it's, you know, it's quite a heavy scene. There's a lot of PBR textures. There's a lot of volumetrics and lighting going on. So I decided to bump it out to 256. But as you can see with the, with the built-in denoiser, it's not such a bad result. So, you know, this looks really, really good. So we can obviously see, however, that the volumetrics and the light is kind of washing out the scene a little bit. And that's kind of what you get sometimes, um, you know, with scenes like these. So, but that's all right. What we can do is we can always post-process it here in Blender in the compositing tab, or you can always bring it into Photoshop which, like I did. So I'm gonna actually throw up an image on the screen here uh, of the Photoshop version of this uh, exact scene. So as you can see that the colors are more vibrant, that kind of washing out due to the volumetrics is a lot less. There's a bit more grain, lens, dirt, etc. Kind of anything to you know elevate the scene to become better than what it was when it came outside of Blender. So at this point, the this is like the end of the tutorial and the breakdown. I hope you guys learned something from watching this video. I hope that you can go out there and create some amazing art of your own, uh, you know, and, you know, if if you have the confidence to post post what you have in the comment section down below. Let me take a look at it, you know, and let's share art as a community. But that's the end of the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click uh, the subscribe button down in the description below we are strong strongly growing as a community and uh you guys are really really helping me out into reaching my goal of 1000 subscribers by the end of 2023 which i haven't said until now but here we are so thank you guys so much again and if you want to see some more of my own videos and you are not yet done clicking away from blender content make sure you watch the video on screen right now to see how you can make a dark hallway with a style similar to this one in Blender 3.4.